Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Foundations. She was basically asking him, will you be the kinsman redeemer? Will you save this family? Will you? She was almost proposing to him, yeah. in essence. Yeah. But using the law of Leverite marriage, will you be the Goel, the kinsman redeemer? Foundations. Understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. We've been exploring the story of the book of Ruth and understanding the important prophetic patterns that emerge as we unpack this story. Because everything we've learned so far about how God wants to relate to his people Israel as a chosen people and his son uh, redeeming his bride, the bride of Christ, the church of which we're a part, all can be seen prophetically in this little tiny book of Ruth. Now, last time we got up to the part where Ruth had been in the field of Boaz and she had gleaned all this extra food, Naomi realizes that Boaz is a kinsman, a near kinsman, and has the potential to be a kinsman redeemer to redeem the family land that they'd lost because they'd lost everything uh, not not just the land, but she'd lost her husband and her children. Ruth lost her, her husband. And so there was this potential for redemption, for all of this being brought back so that they would actually have a future and the family line wouldn't die out. So this is a bit deeper than what we talked about in our last program where we looked at land and property rights, but this is more to do with the family line. There was another element in Jewish law called the law of Leverite marriage, which incorporated the role of the goel, the Goel is the Hebrew word for the title of a kinsman redeemer. So a family member who could redeem another family member. God made provision within the law for the continuation of the family line in the event of a husband and no heir being produced. Remember there was a story of, uh, I can't remember the actual uh, the family it was, but there was a woman who whose husband died and the brother was willing to um, have relations with her, but he wouldn't allow her to mm. get pregnant. God was very angry about yep. that. And we wonder why God would do that. Well, he was quite happy to have the relations, but he didn't want the responsibility mm. of a child from this. And so God took this very, very seriously. This was for the perpetuity of the Jewish people and their future. So the situation with Naomi was that she became aware of the fact that after Ruth had gleaned all of this food, that Boaz was actually a kinsman redeemer. And so she had to explain that she was going to have to do something that was going to require a little bit of bravery on Ruth's part. And what she said was, she said, it's time of the harvest. And so when they were at the threshing floor, everybody would basically, they would be threshing the wheat or barley or whatever it was that they were harvesting, but they would all sleep around the threshing floor. They would stay there to, to not only continue with the harvest, but to protect against any mm. thieves or anything. But she said, you need to dress up, look pretty, and uh, make yourself presentable. And then when everybody's gone to sleep, she said, Boaz will be asleep on the threshing floor. You're going to have to go up and uncover his feet and then lay at his feet. Now, a lot of people think that basically she was propositioning him that's actually incorrect, completely incorrect, because what Naomi instructed her to say was when, when Boaz woke up and realized there was a young woman lying at his feet and he said, who are you? She said, I'm Ruth. Will you spread your skirt over me? Mm. Remember, we've talked about the hem of the government being the authority, the power, the responsibility, that this was a signature of a man's power, his authority and standing in a society. Well, that's exactly what she was asking him, that he would put his authority over her. He would take responsibility, be the kinsman redeemer, in yeah, other words, right. to marry her. And re remember, too, that we also read, it was in Ezekiel 16, where God saw his future wife, Israel, and that when he saw her, that he spread his skirt over her, and he said, you're mine, you became mine. And in effect, he married her. Mm. This was basically the same thing. So there was nothing illicit or sexual in this. There was no propositioning, nothing immoral. She was basically asking him, will you be the kinsman redeemer? Will you save this family? Will you?" She was almost pro um, proposing to him yeah. in essence, yeah. but using the law of Leverite marriage. Will mm. you be the goel, the kinsman redeemer? Okay, and so um, he basically says, 
Yes, you've been very, very honourable. That's basically what he's saying. He said oh, what he did was he, he got a whole load more food and provision <laughs> for her and then he said go home before anybody sees you because he didn't want her to be sullied. He didn't want anybody to get the wrong idea. Mm. So he sent her home quietly and she just says go home and wait and I'll take care of it basically. And then she goes home and Naomi, she sees what happens, that she's come back with all these, all these goodies and she says, right, now we just wait. Now, the thing was, is that to be a kinsman redeemer, you, the kinsman had to meet three conditions. First of all, he had to be a legitimate relative. And he was, Boaz was, he was a legitimate relative and relation. Um, he also had to have the capacity to be the redeemer of the family. It was going to cost him some money because he had to redeem what mm. had been lost. Well, he was quite a wealthy bloke. And so, yeah, he had the provision. The third thing was he had to be willing. God didn't force this on anybody. The, remember I mentioned the other guy before who wanted the relations, but he didn't want the mm. responsibility? He basically said, yeah, I'll do this, but he was only being selfish, thinking of himself. Yeah. He didn't take the responsibility seriously and God was not impressed. But he wasn't forced to do it, but he just chose to please mm. himself. In this case... It, with Boaz, he was actually more than willing. He was so impressed. Not only was he impressed, he was a little bit older than Ruth, and he was so impressed that she didn't go running around after young blokes, mm. that she was so committed to her mother-in-law, to the God of Israel, that this people and his, their God that she had embraced, he was totally impressed with the morality and the ethics of this young woman. And um, and so he basically fell for her. <laughs> But I like this part of the story because this is where... Um, there is a bit uh, of a twist in it, isn't there? There is. Because, and I like what Dr. Missler says. He says because there was an actual relative who was in even closer in relation to this. that He could have thrown a spanner in the works. <laughs> and, um, and, and I always think he, he... I bet he had, you know, I bet he had squinty eyes and bad teeth or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> Boaz is the hero in That's this right. story. And he was actually presented. Boaz had to go and see him. To, to obey the law, he had to go and see him and said, look, this is the situation. Um, you can redeem um, the land. You can redeem the family line and all of that. And the guy goes, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm keen. And that's when Boaz says, yeah, but you also have to. <laughs> yeah, there's a catch. You have to marry Ruth the Moabite. And the guy goes, oh, oh, oh no, I don't think I can actually go that mm. far. And so before the elders of the city, Boaz says, I then am prepared with all these witnesses. You've said you don't want to be the kinsman redeemer, the Goel, but I do want to be the Goel. I am prepared to do what is necessary to redeem this family and their inheritance. And so that's basically what happened. He did. He, he, Boaz the Bethlehemite. Now this is, I love family lines. I love how these things unfold. He got the, fa the, the, the legal right to redeem Ruth and Naomi. So Boaz the Bethlehemite married Ruth the Gentile Moabitess. Okay, Boaz the kinsman redeemer marries Ruth the Gentile Moabitess. They had a baby and he, this baby's name was Obed the Bethlehemite. Obed became the father of Jesse the Bethlehemite and Jesse became the father of of David, the Bethlehemite. And David was his direct line from which the Messiah Jesus comes from. Mm. And yet the picture is so much deeper and richer than that. We still haven't got through all of that. Well, that's right. And that's where, I mean, it, there is multi layers on this, isn't there? there you know, there's is. a there's spiritual series. dimension, yep. the physical dimension, and that Davidic line, of course, that we start to see here. So next time we'll summarize this story and take a prophetic look at this historical family to see what the implications are for us, particularly in light of the fact of what we've been learning about God being Israel's husband and Jesus, the bridegroom of the church. That's next time on Foundations. This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.